Hi, Joe Bonnier from Empower Athletic Development and Fast Pitch Power. In this video, I want to talk about a lower body exercise that I think every athlete and coach should be including in their program to some degree, if not at least working toward, and that's the single leg deadlift. You may have heard this exercise referred to as a single leg stiff leg deadlift or even a single leg RDL. They're very similar patterns. If you're not familiar with the movement, it is a hip flexion pattern over one leg. So I'm going to hinge over my stance leg, and this exercise may or may not include or require a bit of knee flexion if I'm progressing toward lifting something from the ground. And most often I'm going to finish in a single leg posture or single leg stance position. Again, I hinge over my stance leg, I may bend to lift something from the ground, and I finish in this posture position. Now, superficially or obviously we're working a bit of balance, and the muscles involved are primarily the glutes and the hamstrings, which are really our sports performance engine. But this exercise is um, most often limited by by that element of balance, especially as athletes are beginning with this exercise. And so that takes away from the amount of weight they can use. And there's really no intent to move fast. So what are the sports performance implications or how is this exercise really sports specific? Let me flip my demonstration so you see my stance leg now. And I want you to take a look at the involved joint, um, joint angles, uh, the teamwork between joints, and the sequence of the exercise. Because what we're really doing is that we're, this exercise to me is not about overcoming the weight. All right? so it's really about learning how to load the hips eccentrically into that hip flexion pattern because I'm, hopefully I'll be able to show you um, how that's going to transfer to a number of sport specific actions um, on the field or court. Okay, So first let's agree on one thing. We have to agree on strongest really joint angles. We have to agree on what our strongest position is really on the field. The universally, our universal athletic position. I think we all agree that we're going to see this position a lot in sports, or we want to see this position a lot in sports, okay, or at least this organization of joint angles, all right, so my hips are back, my knees are slightly bent, my ankles are slightly flexed, I'm elastic, I'm loaded, I'm ready to move, all right, back is pretty neutral, you're going to see this under a bar when we're squatting, we're going to see this when we're deadlifting, you're going to see it, though, that, um, some, to some degree, those joint angles incorporated in Olympic lifting, uh, now, if, if you agree that we want to see this on two legs, all we're trying to do with the single leg deadlift is recreate those joint angles on one leg. And this is very unique. It's an exclusive benefit to the single leg deadlift because we won't see this in lunges. And we won't see this really with other single leg exercises okay, in which the degree of hip flexion and the relative teamwork and coordination between joints is not the same. The trunk is not inclined forward. We normally have athletes lunging with an upright torso. So this now becomes... This now uh, has exclusive benefits to on-the-field performance because we're learning how to load the hips eccentrically into a good position that I can move out of linearly or laterally. Okay? Weak athletes, or being strong and being explosive is not only about having the physical horsepower in the tissues and in the nervous system to move explosively, um, on the field or court. It's also about organizing the skeleton in the most efficient positions that allow the, allow the athlete to take advantage of elastic properties of a muscle. What do I mean by that? If I'm going to be under a bar or I'm going to be landing out of a jump or trying to cut, okay, I can either kind of go slack in which my glutes are short, my hamstrings are short, or I can put those glutes and hamstrings on stretch in which now I've lengthened these muscles around this joint, joint complex, which is going to help me as I re-accelerate re away from the ground as they contract, you're going to get a stretch reflex that's going to assist in propelling your body in the direction that you want to go. So it's not only about being strong and being, being able to push hard and having that horsepower, it's about loading the skeleton into the right positions biomechanically. Okay? So that's a long-winded answer um, that addresses the need to be to train uh, loaded hip flexion okay, in the gym. Okay, that is unique and different than our lunges and our step ups and other exercises that don't combine the single leg position with those involved joint angles and mechanics. So I think that's the exclusive benefit to the single leg deadlift. Now, this exercise, the, the caveat to this exercise is that it's a difficult exercise to perform. And most new athletes in, in um, beginning trainees or clients will have difficulty with it. You can't just start with this. So we need regressions or progressions toward loaded single leg deadlifts. And hopefully in this video, I'll be able to give you a couple good ideas that I use very regularly. Um, the first 
regression or progression toward single leg deadlifting I like is with uh, the valve slide. I call it a reverse super lunge. Um, I learned this exercise from Kevin Neald. Uh, I think it's a fantastic um, introduction to single leg def deadlifting or single leg hinging mechanics. Okay? With no weight, I, I like adding a reach. And I get that, that cue from Mike Boyle. And I think that really sets the athlete up in a good position during this exercise. So using a furniture mover or valve slide, you're going to start, you're going to be real light on the valve slide with this, this leg. Right? I'd be loading my right leg in this case. I'm going to stay consistent in my example here. I'm going to reach my foot back and reach my arms forward. Okay, so my foot's never leaving the ground, but I'm now learning how to hinge properly, set my back in a good position, and then pull through with the stance leg, okay, um, using the glutes and the hamstrings. Reach super long and pull through, okay. Um, a great introduction again to single leg deadlifts. You can also use weights with this. I'll grab my kettlebells, same thing. If you don't want to just progress to the single leg unsupported versions. Okay, you can keep that toe on the slide board. Get long, get tall. Reach long, stay balanced over the stance leg, and pull through. Next, um, the next progression is using a Reebok step. And what we're going to do, you can, it doesn't matter if you have a Reebok step or if you have a setup like this, if you just use the idea. Uh, we're going to build the single leg deadlift from the bottom up. So with one kettlebell or light dumbbells, it doesn't matter, uh, you want to shorten the range of motion and work from the bottom up. So with a new client, I may just have them get into the bottom position however they can, okay, keeping this knee bent, and I tell them to reach the back leg as straight as can be. We're not going anywhere yet. Once they're in a good position, and that may take some, some adjustment, once they're good, tighten up the armpits, Tighten up the grip, push away from the ground, and try to balance. Then just reverse it, tell them to get long. And at this point, they may need to crash into the box. That's fine. Okay? Have them reset from the bottom up. Lift, balance, and hopefully they reverse it. And each time, they'll stay in a little bit better position. You can progress from one kettlebell or dumbbell to two, and then eventually, you can progress toward the single leg unsupported version. Starting on one leg, reaching long, this would be more of a stiff leg variation, okay? Or you can also go to the ground and up. Okay. So there are three, four, five different ways to progress that exercise. Um, I really like starting with the slide board I think it's a brilliant idea. It really works nicely with a lot of athletes of, or in clients of different um, abilities. Uh, to program this exercise, again, to install it, simply two to three sets, six to ten reps. Start with the easiest version. You can, you can install it in your, if, you, if you want to keep your, your body weight exercise in your warm-ups, keep it there. If you want to use it as a strength training exercise, put it in your, in your workout, right? And then progress. Again, start from the bottom up, but build the floor up then work your way down, and then progress to the unsupported um, version. For questions and comments, post, a, uh, post your question underneath this video on YouTube, Fast Pitch Power, or Empower Rate, wherever you came across this. Thanks for listening, and hopefully I'll talk to you next week.